What's up, you guys? I'm Mike. This is my truck, Max, and this is our home built wooden camper, aka the Maxi Pad. And today we're going to show you how to build a frame for your truck camper that's strong as hell, simple, easy to build, and most importantly, lightweight. When I first got Max and decided to build my own camper, there were a lot of flim flamming naysayers out there shooting the idea down and trying to tell me that I couldn't do it. Is that so? The main argument for most of those naysayers was that the camper would be too heavy. And the reason that a lot of campers tend to be really heavy is because in my opinion, people are using the wrong material to build the frame. I would venture to guess that for most builds, people use two by four dug fir, which is the same thing that people use to frame out houses. That wood tends to come really waterlogged a lot of time. And it's also just not perfectly straight. It is the cheapest option. You'll find it at Home Depot. But in my opinion, it's really not optimal for this build. If you find the right material, two by two should be all the girth you need. 95% of my frame is built out of two by two poplar. And that's a light, strong, hard wood that's gonna provide plenty of rigidity and structural support for the camper. The key is the sheer strength added from your plywood siding. That's where your camper gets the bulk of its strength. On this camper, I used three fifths high grade plywood. Then I screwed the plywood through to the frame all around it to every stud and every runner. So the siding connects every piece of frame together and gives it sheer strength. So it's insanely strong. Strong enough to maintain its structure, box on top of it, I can walk on it, climb all over it, perfectly fine. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about designing the frame. With the goal of keeping things lightweight and simple, my idea was to use as little material as possible in the frame. I decided to focus on building the two walls first and basically framing out like a rectangle on either side and then connecting them in the middle with cross support. And that's how it worked in the actual building process too. We built one wall at a time and then connected them with the cross beams. When figuring out the dimensions for my frame, I first thought about the amount of headspace that I would want and how high the bed would be so that I could determine how tall to make it. I wanted it to be low enough to go through a drive through but high enough to where I wouldn't be feeling claustrophobic inside. 54 inches ended up being pretty much the sweet spot. With the roof rack and the bed box on the top now, I can't make it through most drive through It's about eight, eight and a half, nine feet tall, but if I take the bed box off, I can still get my Mickey D's. I figured out the height that I wanted and then I looked at the length. My whole goal with this was to be able to fit an eight foot long board in the camper. Because my bed is only six feet long, I need a little overhang in the front. Eight feet also happens to be the dimensions of a length of plywood. Plywood comes in eight by four sheets. So I decided to make the top eight feet long so I could do two pieces of plywood side by side four feet plus four feet, totaling eight. For the width of the camper, I basically decided to make it about as wide as the bed walls themselves because my camper sits on the rails of the bed. It's actually bolted through the top of the rails into the actual wall of my truck bed. So in addition to figuring out the dimensions that I wanted, the other important thing to think about is where do you want to put your windows? I knew that I would want this open window here on this side we call it the bar you can pass things through i knew that i would want a skinny bathroom sized window on this side and i knew that i was going to have these porthole windows in here so i factored that into the equation the portholes don't need anything structurally they basically just screw on to the plywood and seal off but this window needed to be framed structurally this needed to be framed structurally so that helped me determine where I was gonna put my studs in the wall. In order to bolt the camper to the truck bed, I needed a wider surface on the rail than a two by two. 
Plus, I just wanted to make sure it was real strong. So I used two by fours that are laying flat on the rails here. And then I built the rest of it up from there in two by two. The only other place that I use two by four is in the uprights that frame in the back double doors. These doors are hinged on a frame that is screwed into two by fours that run flat against the back and connect down to the two by fours on top of the bed rails to create an L of two by four in the back and on the bottom of the frame. So for me, designing and building the frame came down to basically building both the sidewalls freestanding in the shop and then connecting them with the cross supports and creating a full unit. The key is to think it through before you start putting wood together. Draw the thing out, sketch it out a bunch of times, get your measurements right, and really think it through before you start building, because that's gonna be the foundation of your entire build, and it's really important that you get it right. Once I got the design where I wanted it, the next step was to start building. So I found a nice space in my buddy's wood shop, got all the materials and tools together, and had about four friends help out, and we started piecing the frame together piece by piece. Almost as important as screwing the frame together is using glue with every seam. I can't stress that enough. You need to be gluing as you screw, building out your frame in order for it to be strong for the long haul. Once all the screwing and the gluing of the frame was done, we moved on to cutting and putting on the siding, this plywood that you see here. That's where you get your shear strength, is having it screwed off every eight inches along the entire frame also having those same lines glued and then having the plywood support the frame and create the structural integrity of the entire unit. And here's a pro tip for you guys who want a little bit more of a fancy finish and want a nicer aesthetic. If you countersink your screw holes and then you plug them with wooden plugs, AKA bungs, then you won't be able to see the screw heads and it'll add a nice, aesthetic so you countersink it so the screw head goes in deeper than the surface of the plywood you fill that with glue and plug a little wooden bung in there and then you sand it down and it gives you this nice craftsman aesthetic and you can't see any of the screw heads it's a cool technique but once you have it done you're never getting those screws out without totally screwing up your whole camper so be sure the screws are in the right place. All right, you guys, well, I'm sure I'm forgetting a whole bunch of stuff, but that's all I can think of for now. So if you're still curious about anything, get at me in the comments, I'm quick to answer, and we can always make another video to follow up if this doesn't explain things thoroughly enough. Well, thanks for hanging out and good luck with your builds. Catch you in the next one.